for many people, Universal Studios is the home of horror. And while much of that comes from their distribution of modern horror films through avenues such as Blumhouse Productions, those roots can be traced back to the 1930s and 40s when their classic monster films defined the genre and brought the studio out of financial panic. The Universal Classic Monsters are iconic horror characters for sure, influencing how many of us view movie monsters, but because of updated technologies and shifts in pop culture, they don't really hold up their scariness as much as they did when the original films were released. Or I guess I should say they didn't, at least not until recently. Because the monsters have become scary again, but not through any gritty movie remake, but instead through Universal's world-famous Halloween event, Halloween Horror Nights. While ties between the classic monsters and HHN have gone back as far as the event itself, there has been a shift over the past few years as to how the monsters are marketed and represented at Halloween Horror Nights that truly brings them to the modern era without losing any of their classic charm or nostalgia. When Universal set to incorporate a Halloween event into their then new Universal Studios Florida Park in 1991, many of the IPs used to market the new Fright Nights event were ones that Universal already had the theme park rights to, such as Beetlejuice, Norman Bates, and the Universal Classic Monsters of course. However, like their presence in the park during daytime hours, they were a bit campy and more important for their nostalgic value as classic films rather than actually being scary. That will continue even as they were incorporated throughout the event in the 1990s and 2000s, with them being featured in haunted houses but never being the scariest thing at any given event. As they appeared in their original films, they were a good back pocket IP for Universal, to cash in on the monsters nostalgia of the 1990s, and add another first party property to the event. However, into the late 2000s and early 2010s, Universal Pictures sought to kickstart a darker, more modern take on the monsters in their films. And that translated to the return of the monsters to Halloween Horror Nights as figures of fear. Remakes such as Dracula Untold and the 2010 Wolfman got houses. However, these adaptations adaptations didn't really catch on as much. And it would be one house that really changed the way the monsters were seen and kick off a new age for the characters at HHN, a house simply titled Universal Monsters. Opening at Universal Studios Hollywood in 2018 and Universal Studios Florida in 2019, this house would essentially be a love letter to each of the characters and their respective films. And while they've done houses like this before, there are a few factors that I think make it a perfect introduction to the types of monster houses that we've been getting recently. First off, the designs of the monsters have been for the most part modified while still keeping that classic look. Gil Man and the Bride look pretty close to their film counterparts, but the Wolfman, the Mummy, and Dracula have more dramatic facial features, looking less like humans and more beastly. Probably my favorite redesign though has to be Frankenstein's monster, who keeps his green skin in stitches, but features more exposed flesh on the face. While the sets in previous iterations of the concept have worked to replicate famous scenes from the movies, these sets do that while creating a more expansive and threatening environment. And the moody lighting really works to sell them as someplace scary and mystical, the lighting tricks in the Gilman segment from Orlando really come to mind as you feel submerged underwater. Overall, the visual aesthetics of this house encapsulates the most important strength of this iteration of the monsters, which is keeping the fundamentals of what made those films work, but modifying some elements to make it feel new and scary. However, there's also another factor at play when it comes to this house that really worked in retrospect, and that's how it's structured. This house doesn't really have a strict linear story, but rather is just about bringing you into an iconic moment or moments from each film with them coming together by the end. But because of that, guests could really get a feel of which scenes they liked, and those scenes could be expanded in future installments. Plus, establishing all these characters as existing together can encourage any different pairing of monsters in future spin-off houses. And this makes sense as the Universal Monster movies, while all based on different stories by different creators, begin to overlap with their many sequels, creating what's known as the first real cinematic universe. And with this house as the beginning of a new arc for the monsters, Universal saw its long-term success and began kickstarting those different spin-off houses. 
first was Universal Studio Hollywood's 2019 Frankenstein Meets the Wolfman Maze, and while that one had some interesting scenes, it wouldn't be until their next spin-off that they would really try something new within the lore of the monsters. 2021 saw both Hollywood and Orlando get Universal Monsters The Bride of Frankenstein Lives, which followed the story of the creature's bride attempting to awaken him from the dead with a little help from some friends. While the story in the Universal Monsters house was a lot looser, the story here is more structured, specifically taking place just after the 1935 Bride of Frankenstein film. I think having that connection to the movie, even going as far to show clips in the house itself, really highlights the classic influence on this story. I also think they do well in bringing the bride to the current day by really focusing the house on her character, giving her more face time, I guess, and amending her character to almost become like a mad scientist herself. Visually, this house stands out due to how it uses its sets to really create a great atmosphere. You of course get that dynamic opening scene which really plays with scale, and the winding pathways and corridors really makes you feel trapped within this castle. The Bride of Frankenstein Lives wasn't as action packed as the monster's house, but it did a lot in cementing these monster spin-offs to have legs, even with the uncomfortable conventional story choices they decided to roll with. However, their next spinoff would go even more ambitious with its story and its monster count. The most recent monster's house to come to Halloween Horror Nights was last year where the Wolfman, Mummy, and Dracula faced off in Universal Monsters Legends Collide. This house was marketed as a three-way face-off for a mystical amulet, however the approach to that story would be split into two different chapters at both Orlando and Hollywood's event, with Orlando being the first part and Hollywood being the second part. In the first part, Larry Talbot, aka the Wolfman, is looking for a way to reverse his curse until he gets a mysterious letter sending him to an Egyptian dig site. Unknowingly arriving on a full moon, he becomes the Wolfman and the writer of this letter is actually Dracula, who wants the amulet to walk around during the day. And as if it couldn't get any worse, Caris the Mummy is resurrected and wants the amulet for himself, so here's your battle. The house is mostly structured like an exploration of Egyptian tombs, with each character Character coming out to scare you before one reigns supreme, which would change every night. And in Hollywood's version, it's essentially a similar story, but some other characters such as Renfield and Dracula's Brides appear, and of course a different setting, this time being set in a 19th century shipping facility and museum for ancient artifacts. Now because of the overextended story, it makes talking about this house's strengths a little bit more difficult, but clearly Legends Collide demonstrates some of the aims of Universal in creating original stories for the monsters. This house has more lore than the previous two, and is based less on the movies, even though there is some clear influence from them. And in both cases, the facade and sets truly encapsulates the location and time periods very well, making them not feel generic. And I believe it's because of these atmospheres that the monsters feel really scary. Specifically in Florida, the tombs are super dark, so that definitely allows the character designs to stand out when they do appear. And in both cases, there's also a lot of emphasis on aggression and the sheer amount amount of scares. And of course, the scare actors really knock it out of the park in delivering on this. I definitely feel like the scale of Legends Collide makes it a great next step for the evolution in how Universal uses these monsters' houses, and considering it won House of the Year in Orlando last year, it definitely is paying off. While only having a few installments under their belt, Universal's new take on the monsters at HHN reinvents and recontextualizes the characters we all know and love. There's a reason these characters were so scary yet instantly iconic all those years ago, and Universal knows that but also allows the creators to make shifts where possible utilizing lighting, projections, and sound to create a truly cinematic experience. And all of these reasons are why I think these houses are so popular. It's clear that time, effort, and creativity goes into them, and there's always an attempt to play around and find what works with each character to get the best scare. All this being said, if Universal Pictures is at all looking to possibly restart a monster cinematic universe, I say look no further than the reinvented Universal Classic Monsters at HHN.